I'm not okay with a mediocre job. I'm not okay with a mediocre apartment. I'm not okay with a mediocre life. This quote was taken from a movie I just rewatched yesterday. This is Jim Carrey's character in Bruce Almighty, which perfectly lobs up today's Shadow of Desire. Welcome to the Shadow Work Library. I'm Jessica DePazzi, and for the next at least 62 shows, I'm going to take you through this series that covers the spectrum of negative patterns in the human experience. Hey everybody, so today we are talking about the shadow of desire. We're going to transform that into a strength, if you can believe that. This is such a good one. Uh, Desire at its most basic definition is this hunger or yearning for something that's not necessary for our survival. And it manifests as either flippancy or over seriousness. Now, before we dive into everything, I want you to head on over to wayoftrials.com if you're into digging into your life and learning more about your coping mechanisms or uh, how you can utilize your physical body to improve your quality of life. We already have about 20 people going through the course now and you can join at any time. It's uh, in a word, life-changing. Yeah, I don't want to uh, hype it up or anything, but it's pretty good. So let's talk about desire. Get back to the, the topic here. Where does it come from? Desire is a part of us that helps us learn lessons and evolve. And when I say us, I'm actually talking about humanity and not necessarily you, the individual. In the case of the purpose of the shadow, individuals are kind of expendable for the greater good and um, for further evolution of everyone else and future generations. And it's all based around this idea that for us to grow and level up as a species, we need to master our environment. We are a highly intellectual species and really quite soft and weak in many other ways um, that other animals are not. So we need to use our minds to outwit the elements. And in order to do that, we need to explore all aspects of our minds to become masters of that tool. And this also includes understanding that darker side of the human experience as well as the lighter. We learn and evolve through experience. So there's really nothing that as a human race, we can avoid experiencing. Now, again, remember, I'm talking about humanity as a whole. So there's lots of things that you can avoid experiencing as an individual because the people before you did them and we learned from their mistakes. Just imagine everyone on the planet, everyone that exists today and has ever existed before shares one big brain that lives on forever and ever or until the human race ends. Desire encourages exploration of every single neural network in this giant forever brain every single possible experience even the most like screwed up and depraved ones and that's why we don't necessarily need to follow all impulses to seek more or different because we can choose to learn the lessons from our ancestors some of these neural connections have led to short circuiting and some have led to amazing discoveries that really push us forward and make us better as uh, as a group and better than the generation prior And as we open up these new universes of experiences, there's like a whole new set of new neural networks that is ready to be explored. So this exploration process is just exponentially getting larger and larger as we dive into all of this. So you can see that desire, like all shadows, isn't inherently bad. It's an innocent drive that's ingrained in our DNA, but it's really what you choose to do with your desire that can lead to suffering. You know, it's a little counter to the Buddhist belief that desire is unspiritual because it leads to suffering. It's not that desire itself is wrong or right. It's just your reaction to it. I mean, we're humans who are supposed to feel yearning. And this seeking for more and different, it drives us into this world of experiences. And that's exactly what it's supposed to do. And the more you categorize uh, desire as evil, the more power you give it. The more you stuff down your thoughts without working through them and really try to understand where they're coming from, the more they boil up unresolved. And on the flip side, the more you give in to your desires, the more you should realize that they never can be satisfied. Seeking an ending to your desires is a huge illusion, but it can be harnessed for good, which is what we'll talk about in a little bit. Now, how do you recognize the shadow in your life? Desire can come up in so many ways, and it all really depends on your... um, like what you want, you know, use the individual. But some common topics at hand are sexual desire, the the desire to move up in status, to have a bigger, better house and car, material material goods, to have more power and influence, to look sexier. And 
Oh, that's just a few ways they can manifest. Now, specifically on the blame side of the spectrum, and remember, this is you expressing this outward version of your shadow, it shows up as flippancy. Sorry, my, my dog's in here. He's enjoying this uh, little door stopper. <laughs> so if you've watched The Office, just imagine Michael Scott. Or uh, at a more dramatic degree, let's talk about like Todd Packer. I mean, Todd Packer, he is a character that is just the worst. He has very little moral framework, at least... Yeah, I would say probably n- none. And he's a rebel to any kind of policy, righteous behavior, or hierarchy. And he becomes bitter and lashes out by diving headfirst into more and more of his desires. He looks to end his suffering by exhausting any desire that comes to his mind. And I know this is kind of a funny and hard to relate to example, but for any of you who've gone through this stereotypical like university experience, and were yes people, like myself, yes to everything. Consequences weren't really a thing on my radar at the time. You probably started to burn yourself out and started to fall victim to some of the longer, more permanent consequences, like poor reputation, poor health, poor relationships. And then you become that guy who can either decide to follow down that path forever because it's just easy and that's who you are now, or you can climb his way out of that pit and make amends along the way, which it's... I mean, if you can just imagine a person like Todd Packer trying to do good in the world, it takes a lot to kind of undo the things that following your desires or all of your desires has um, created for you. On the shame side of the spectrum, you're expressing this inward version of the shadow state, which is over seriousness. And I would say that this is the majority of people today. When you repress all of your desires, you begin to take everything in life way too seriously. And... I actually think that most people in the world today are plagued by over seriousness because our desires have been deemed evil. And we believe it like if true feelings are unleashed or if people are encouraged to just go for it, whatever it is, then there would be anarchy. And while that is true, I think we've kind of fallen a little bit too far on that side of the spectrum. I think we need to live believing that natural thoughts that come to mind are good. You know, this desire for more and different isn't inherently bad. And believing that the thoughts that come to your mind are evil, I believe that that's a recipe for self-loathing and self-judgment, which then turns into an underlying resonance of just pessimism and your fire has kind of sizzled in everything you do. So what do we do about it? Well, first you need to recognize that you can never really transcend desire. No program in the world, no book, no person should ever tell you that they have the secret to ending your sense of longing. You can't fight an evolutionary force. But understand that there are times to answer that call and there are times to not take that thought or impulse too seriously. And you just need to laugh at it and let it go. And I would say let it go is the key phrase here. The root of the shadow of desire is our want to control it. Like this is the big dilemma with it. And whether you fall victim to your desires or by stifling and pretending they don't exist, you are trying to control what's happening. But once you relinquish control and then realize that these impulses are just hardwired in us, you accomplish what the hippies call surrender. (laughs) To surrender. You might have heard this term a lot, but it's basically just like lightening up. You know, don't take this stuff too seriously. Don't judge yourself. Don't act impulsively. And no, you're not escaping life by making light of it. Having a sense of humor about some of these more serious things is one of the most intellectual ways of being because you're clever. You can see both sides. And those are really the funniest people, right? The people who see things from so many different perspectives, they can detach from it and they can help you detach from it. And that leaves you with a sense of peace and joy about whatever it is. So how does this become a strength? When you raise your vibration in the realm of desires, you can transform desires into the strength of lightness. And okay, it might not seem at first like Lightness is a superpower, like the one last week we talked about, you know, being a revolutionary for socioeconomic change. But lightness is something that so many of us desire, you know, and there's that word again. If you're in a relationship that's grown overly serious and just filled with responsibilities, what do you want? You want lightness. You want play. You want a little room for delight in your relationship and in your life. And that doesn't mean you go around, you know, making jokes all day, not taking anything seriously, because that's just another form of flippancy. You 
when you really do the work and create this, this superpower of lightness, you have the power to know that life is all really just a game. And you walk around with like the sparkle in your eye and people notice that. And as you become this role model for lightness, it encourages other people naturally to not take this game so seriously. You have the gift to give people what they most desire, which is to feel at home in their current reality, to be lighter in their being. And it'll encourage people to speak differently to their children, to approach conflict a little lighter, to make decisions a little bit more playfully. And this is really a great power to have. And it was all built from the seed of desire. It's helping people see that the things that they desire are just are just things, they're just thoughts, and they can do what they want with them. And I think that that's a really beautiful thing, and we need more of that today. Okay, so there it is. This is our second shadow work submission. I really enjoyed that. Uh, Desires and I go way back, and so it's nice to put this all out there so you can become friends with this tricky shadow too. Uh, Next time, we're going to be talking about the shadow of victimization. So if you're feeling like you're complaining a lot or blaming a little bit too much, like it's a consistent narrative when you're feeling like poop, then this will be an awesome show for you. You'll learn the origins of victimization. And the reason I like to talk about the origins is because every shadow has a purpose for why it exists. Um, And we'll also talk about how victimization manifests in your life, what you can do about it, and how doing shadow work with victimization can transform into the strength of freedom. So don't let the terrorists win. Check out this next episode and learn how you can really be free. Thanks for listening, everybody. And if you want to learn more about our 12-week self-discovery and physical training course called The Trials, visit wayoftrials.com. It's a brilliant synthesis of uh, modalities that helps you identify your life's work and how you can strategically manage your body so both body and mind are working towards self-transcendence. And if you have any questions about what I talked about today, you can always email me at jessica at thespecialforcesexperience.com or hit me up on Instagram at jessicadepotsy underscore. Have a great week, and I'll talk to you soon.